Well, hello guys and welcome back. You know, last time I was with you working on the 71 Chevy truck project, uh, I mentioned at the end of the video that I was going to bring you along and show you a very old school method for body repair. And uh, that's what we're going to do. It's actually something that at one time in the past I very much excelled at. Uh, if I could be so bold as to to claim that. I got very good at it and I really enjoyed it. And that's pretty much par for the course with me. Um, things that I really enjoy and do well, nobody does anymore. So nobody cares. But anyway, what we're going to be doing is welding sheet metal, butt welding sheet metal with no filler rod with our oxyacetylene torch. So on the front fenders of our 71 Chevy, we have some rusted out lapped metal here and on both of them this inner piece that this overlaps actually looks pretty decent like I could just clean that up and re-spot weld it but what we need to re-weld I'm gonna have to cut this out make a patch and uh, re-weld it in just playing around with my torch because I haven't done this for years you can see what the welds look like. Now, I would never do this procedure on a large panel, um, especially one that is visible when you're done. This is very much reinforced. Everything is very rigid and stiff in here, so it's not going to be too big of an issue, and I'm also going to use wet rags around where I'm welding to keep the heat isolated. That is the huge drawback of welding with a torch, is the amount of heat it puts into the metal. But man, it is so fun and it, pro it uh, produces such a beautiful little weld. I love it. Now I know my clamps are pretty much right in the way, but you can pretty much tell how good of a joint I have going on here. There's a little bit of a uh, gap where my cutting wheel gouged into the side, let's say, uh, but I think it's probably small enough. You know, if you had to resort to a little bit of welding rod there, you could, but we're going to try it. You know, maybe I could squeak a fingernail through here and there, but we'll see what happens. Here at my bottles, we're shooting for about 5 PSI on each one. I've got a good Radner gauge regulator on the acetylene. So I can really dial that in. It looks like I'm about out. Um, but I pretty much had to guess on the oxygen. Just went by the sound of the oxygen coming through the tip compared to the acetylene. So. This cheap gauge or, and uh, regulator. Uh, yeah, you know. I'm set up with my smallest tip. Um, to be honest with you, I am not an everyday welder. I have not made my life, uh, my livelihood welding. I do not even know the size of this tip. Suffice to say, it's the smallest one. And about the smallest. Um, uh, tip cleaner needle or whatever you call it <laughs> goes in there and that's it so very small I want a very tiny very petite flame um, not a lot of gas coming through here at all we do we don't want to heat it up more than we have to so I'm gonna get some wet rags and we'll light this thing up and again, I caution you: do not do this in a high, in a in an area on sheet metal that is going to negatively impact the straightness of the panels. This this is high heat. You do not want to warp large, flat, or nicely curved sections of panel. This is much more supported down here. It's not going to get out of control. At least I hope not. 
Now I'm going to throw on some shaded lenses so I can see what's going on. And we'll do this. Very small flame, as you can see. Okay, as soon as this material warms up, you're going to see a puddle form right there. And we're just going to walk that puddle. I just, whoop. I just keep zigzagging. Let it get a little hot there. Just keep zigzagging across the line. I'm going to do it again. What I'm looking for is both sides of the seam to uh, heat up equal. A puddle will start on one side, I switch to the other, make sure make sure our puddle is flowing across the seam there. I mean, look at that beautiful weld. It's gorgeous. Better than the first one. Unfortunately, the obvious downside is you can tell how much heat it puts in that panel. And I don't know what the old school dudes did. If they just put the heat to it and then expect to beat it and reshape it. I imagine that's all they had to do. Here's this section. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's just that tiny little gap there right to the to the right of the vice grip jaw that my flame is at. I'm gonna turn this up just ever so slightly and see if we can push that a little better without uh, Popping. Come on now. You can see how practical it is. But it sure is fun. If you're warped like me. Start a little teardrop and start walking at home there. Bingo. Now the surrounding panel is pleasantly warm is the best that could be saying said for it. Now I'm going to give this a couple spot welds to hold these two layers together again. Uh, I'll probably take my MIG and fix the slice on the, the bend down there on the bottom. But otherwise this repair is good.
Okay, so here's a last look at our repair. Um, certainly could have gotten my line a little straighter, but you know how it is. You got a bright flame in your eyes. You can't quite see the line as good as you'd like. Um, now this I would say here in this location where it's at, I could just hit it with the DA or media blast it, prime it, and uh, forget about it. You know, there's there is no raised portion. I can feel I can feel the roughness of the weld below there, um, but there is no raised filler. So, and considering where this is, um, we have our radiator support coming here. This is just tucked up beneath. Um, kind of behind the radiator support, behind the grill. Um, it's doubtful you'd even see this from underneath. I don't know exactly. Um, you could probably spy it if you look through the right space, but uh, really doesn't matter. All I was trying to achieve was to just show you uh, a very old school method for doing sheet metal repair or any welding repair. Um, this used to be very popular and probably still is, I don't know. Uh, with experimental aircraft construction, making um, fuselages out of very thin wall steel tubing. My oldest brother, in fact, uh, as kids he was constantly building RC airplanes and that changed eventually after uh, his college years. Um, he has spent his entire adult life in the uh, service and repair and modification of actual aircraft and he has built many of his own experimentals um, as well as ultralights and so he does this method now I don't know if those guys probably typically use filler rod as their welding um, but this would be a method that adds very little weight to the construction of an airplane and uh, like anything you know TIG welding has probably taken over a lot of that as well um, but for the guys in their garages or their home sheds building their own aircraft, um, certainly I would expect my brother still uses this method. Uh, but anyway, as far as on a large surface, external surface of a body panel, um, what they used, I, I imagine they just had to do this, keep it as cool as they possibly could, and expect to use the hammer and dolly or uh, use a rosebud, heat a large area, and try to shrink it back into submission once they were done. If they even cared back then. You know, that is definitely another factor. So, anyway, there you go. Torch welding, no filler rod, on sheet metal. It's a lot of fun. But, of course, remember, I am kind of weird that way. Hey, thank you so much, guys, for joining me. God bless you. We'll see you on the next one. Wonder what else I can weld around here.